So I think I screwed up. I'm not sure about it though, and that's why I'm here right now writing about this on Reddit. My best friend Kate, 25, female, and I, also 25, female, have been friends since middle school. She and I have been inseparable since forever, and we know pretty much everything about each other. Then there's my fiancé, Jake, 26, male, who I met in college. We dated for a couple of years and got engaged a couple of months ago. I got engaged a couple of months ago. Jack is a quiet introvert and nothing like me, which is something I like about him. He's really shy and doesn't like talking to women much. It had taken a lot for him to even open up to me when we first started going out. So it came as a surprise to me when he and Kate started becoming good friends a couple of months back. They discovered a common interest, this TV show that both of them loved watching, and when they realized that they were both big fans of the show, they started having watch parties at our home. A few weeks ago, I saw Jack laughing at something on his phone, and when he showed it to me, I realized it was a funny meme that Kate had sent him. I didn't know they texted, and when I asked him, he told me that they were kind of friends now. That made me feel a little weird. I didn't just feel insecure because my husband and my best friend were getting along, but there's more to it. I was mostly insecure and a little suspicious because last year, Kate had an affair with a married guy. It was some guy from work who had been married for three years, and Kate knew about his wife, but she still went out with him. They were in a relationship for eight months before her conscience finally kicked in and she left. Another reason for her ultimately breaking things off with that guy was that he kept putting her off. He'd tell her that he would soon tell his wife about Kate, but never would. So she got tired of waiting around for him and just broke up, but the wife never found out about it. A month after her breakup, she quit her job there too and started somewhere else. She was honest with me about this whole thing, and I told her several times that this was a bad idea, but she was head over heels in love with her co-worker and couldn't seem to let him go. She was totally crazy about him, and in spite of all my advice, she still went back to him every time he asked her to. She feels bad about it now and hasn't been in touch with him since their breakup, but the fact that she'd engaged in an extramarital affair still made me feel very weird about her friendship with my husband. Jake doesn't have any female friends, and Kate happened to be one of two, the other being his cousin. That's why it freaked me out a little, and I started overthinking things. I didn't have it in me to just confront them about it because I didn't want to come off as rude or paranoid, but I needed to know if something was brewing between them or not. So I did something juvenile and went in a very weird direction. I saw an advertisement for a pregnancy test while scrolling through my phone a couple of days back, and at the time I was really freaking out over Kate and Jake's friendship. Kate had been acting very squirrely around that time, and I could tell that she was hiding something from me. Jake was also being secretive, and that just made me feel extra suspicious, so I decided to invite Kate over the next day and announce my pregnancy, to watch how they'd react to it. If there was something going on between them, then they definitely wouldn't be too happy about it, and I'd have my answer. Now that I look back on this, of course, I, I realize what an immature and ridiculous strategy I'd opted for, but I wasn't thinking straight back then. I invited Kate over, and when she and Jake were both at home, I sat them down and made the announcement. I even told them about how I wanted them to be the first people to know everything, and to my surprise and relief, Jake seemed to be thrilled about it. He was overjoyed, but unfortunately, that was not the case with Kate. She congratulated me first and tried to smile, but within seconds of my announcement, she'd broken into tears and was sobbing with her face in her hands. I was alarmed. And so was Jake, because we had no clue as to why she'd reacted this way. I put all my own worries aside just to console her, and then, through sobs, she told me that she just received the results of her fertility test some days back, and she was unfortunately infertile. She told me that she'd gotten herself tested because she'd been seeing this guy, which is why she was being so uptight around me. 
This guy was friends with me back in college, but then we had some stupid fight in our last year and just never spoke again. She'd matched with him on a dating app and they'd been seeing each other for a while now, but she'd been keeping it a secret from me because the guy didn't want me to know just yet and neither did she. Because I'd not approve of him and advise her to leave him, but she liked him, so she'd been keeping it all low key. She'd had the test done because things were getting serious between them. And he'd mentioned that he wanted kids in future. He'd said it casually, but she thought that she could get tested because she'd never had a pregnancy scare ever. And that seemed a little suspicious to her, but it all made sense now. I was horrified when she told me the real reason she'd been acting so weird and why she'd started crying at my pregnancy announcement. And I felt even worse when she left, still crying, because she said that she needed to be alone for a while and process everything. I felt like crap about what I did and the stupid way I chose to deal with this situation. I've confessed to Jake since then and he thinks I took it way too far. I should have just talked to them both and had an honest and open discussion instead of doing something so weird and pointless. He's forgiven me and I'm thankful for that, but I haven't been able to figure out what to do about the situation with Kate. On one hand, I feel really sorry about the way I made her feel and want to tell her the truth, but then again, I don't think this was entirely my fault because I couldn't have known what she was going through. I also don't know how to tell her the truth at all. She's been distant from me ever since the day she told me the truth and hasn't been responding to my texts for some days now. I think she's taking this too personally, and I can't help but think that if I had been pregnant and this had been her reaction to it, I wouldn't have been too happy about it. In her head, I'm pregnant, and she's still choosing to give me the cold shoulder over something like this, when instead she should be celebrating with me. I know it's not real, but it still stings. I don't know. AITA for telling my best friend and fiancé that I was pregnant to gauge their reactions because I wanted to find out if they were having an affair or not? Update 1. So, I went through the comments on my original post and I'm so ashamed of myself. I knew that I'd been juvenile, but To what extent exactly, that was something I didn't really realize until I saw the comments on this post. Jake went easy on me, to be very honest. I don't think any other guy would have forgiven me so easily. He understands me and loves me, and that's the only reason I got away with this so easily. It was horrible to lead him to believe that we were having a baby just because I was feeling insecure. And what I did with Kate was pretty screwed up too. He reassured me that he and Kate never were and never will be anything more than just good friends who occasionally talk online. I know Kate has her own flaws and everything, but I had no right to do what I did to her. I get it now, and I've apologized to her and come clean about it too. I didn't have the guts to do it to her face, so I typed everything out in an email and sent it to her an hour ago. She hasn't seen it yet, and even if she has, I haven't heard anything from her. Jake thinks she'll forgive me for what I did, but I'm not too sure because she seemed very torn up about the whole pregnancy thing. Some of you guys had also asked about the guy she's been seeing and why I had a fight with him, so I guess I'll share that too while I wait for her to reply to me. So her current partner, Travis, 25, male, and I went to college together and were friends, but we had a huge fallout when I discovered that he'd been seeing a girl who was a known bully. Like she was a full-blown nutcase attention seeker who would always do weird crap for attention. And when she saw that Travis and I were good friends, she spread some nasty rumors about me, which is why I got into a fight with Travis. He was defending her, and I couldn't believe that he was siding with her on this. So that's how our friendship ended. Of course, I didn't keep in touch, so now I don't know what he's like anymore. He might have changed, and he might have remained the same, But after my terrible experience with him, I definitely would have advised Kate to stay away from him. I can't control what she does, which was evident right from when she dated her married co-worker. But I can nag her and force her to eventually change her mind about men who are just bad decisions. So that's what I usually do when she goes after terrible guys, which is more often than I'd like to admit. Update 2. 
Kate got back to me and we met over coffee this evening. I was very nervous, but she seemed happy to see me. It's been almost two weeks since the day of my announcement and Jake's forgotten about it entirely, bless his heart. But I haven't been able to forget and neither had Kate. She put me at ease as soon as I got there and any awkwardness went away that instant. We hugged and apologized. We didn't even need to specify what exactly we were sorry about because we knew and that's all that mattered. She told me she didn't want to do it at home because she didn't want it to be awkward for Jake, who wasn't very good around emotional situations, and it was really sweet that she'd thought of him. Apparently, she'd broken up with Travis because he'd forced her to keep their relationship a secret, not just from me, but from everyone in general. She hadn't told me how long they'd been together initially, but today I found out that they'd been together for almost a year now. And it wasn't actually Travis who'd brought up the topic of kids and marriage like she'd originally told us. It had been Kate. She'd asked him if he ever wanted to get married and have kids because my upcoming wedding had forced her to take stock of her own relationship too. He'd said that he wanted that in the long run but wanted to keep their relationship under wraps for now. Kate had been planning on getting tested after that discussion because she thought she'd finally found a guy who wanted the same things as her, but just wanted to keep things private and low-key for some time, so she was ready to wait for him. She got the test done just to be on the safe side because the thing about her never having had a pregnancy scare was actually true, and her cycles were also really irregular. So she did get tested and that's what changed everything. It wasn't just the infertility that she was upset about, but also their breakup. A day after my conversation with her, she told Travis that she was infertile and he seemed to be okay with it. But that day, she gave him an ultimatum and told him that since they were almost a year into their relationship, she thought it was about time they started getting more serious and that he should make things public. He didn't want to do that and once again he brought up the thing about me and said that he just didn't want me nosing into their relationship because he knew how annoying I could be when I wanted something to be done. Kate put her foot down though and unfortunately it didn't end well. It was really weird to me that in spite of being together for eight months, Travis didn't want to take things to the next level and would rather break up with Kate than just tell everyone that they were together. I thought he was cheating, but I didn't tell Kate about it. That was the last thing she needed to hear, and if the relationship was over anyway, there was no need for me to add fuel to the fire and make her feel worse about herself. She'd been very low for the past couple of days, mostly about her own infertility, and then the breakup to add to that misery. After that email, she felt better that at least she wouldn't have to deal with pregnancy around her so soon while she was struggling with her own emotions about it. We talked about Jake too, and she said the same thing that Jake had told me, that they were just friends and that was it. I was too important to both of them to even think of jeopardizing it. It was kind of emotional and we got really teary-eyed talking about these things because we've been friends for so long. But now that we're grown-ups, we forget sometimes that we're not the girls we knew back in high school. I'm really happy she broke up with Travis because if he was still keeping their relationship a secret, then he didn't deserve Kate at all. Kate deserved better than someone who led her on for ages without any promise for the future of their relationship. It was pretty ridiculous of that guy to use me as an excuse not to go public with their relationship too. And had he not done that, I might have reconsidered my stance on how he is as a person. But this just reinforced what I already believed about him, that he was not ready to commit to her fully and was using me as an excuse to hypothetically, if Kate had told me about Travis, and I'd have been right to ask her to leave him. That guy is as troublesome as it gets. I know that. Update three. Hey everyone. So unfortunately I was right about Travis and he actually had been cheating, which is why he wasn't ready to post her publicly. Just a couple of days ago, he posted a picture with some other woman celebrating their three months together, but Kate and Travis had broken up just a few weeks back. Kate is devastated because he's blocked her already and she actually had to find out through someone else. She came over last night and she was just a mess, sobbing like a baby and reeking of cheating wine. Jake and I made her dinner and then let her fall asleep on our couch. 
It was hard to watch her because I felt like I could have prevented this all if I just talked to her about her weird behavior earlier and made her tell me the truth. Then she would have told me who she was seeing and I would have been able to nip their relationship in the bud. But I was too caught up in my own head to think about anyone else at that point. I know that this isn't my fault, but it still feels a lot like it is. I can't help feeling like crap over Kate's emotional state right now because she's really, really upset about how this has all turned out. She said she never saw this coming, which I can believe because when it comes to guys, she always just refuses to see any red flags until it's too late for her. She pretends they're her soulmates and acts oblivious to all their toxicity until they prove to her why exactly they're bad for her. Kate has always been this way, right from high school, and has never known what's good for her. Or who's good for her. That's why I've always been protective of her. But some lessons people just have to learn for themselves. And I guess this was one of those lessons. Update 4. Hi folks. So the wedding is just a month away, which makes me realize how many weeks have passed since I last posted an update on what's been going on. Jake and I are as happy as ever and Kate's been making better decisions too, like she started therapy and has completely sworn off men for a while. She'd never been single for long in the past couple of years and was jumping from one relationship to another without giving herself the time to even heal from her past. And in spite of my advice, she'd constantly end up in awful situations with these men who were usually just terrible people. She did meet a few good men, but those relationships never lasted long. It was a whole thing, but I'm glad she's doing better now. The only sad thing is that she's decided to step down as my maid of honor because it's too much to take on right now. I understand her decision and respect it, but I won't lie, I was very disappointed when she stepped down. Don't get me wrong, I do want her to put herself first, but ever since we first became friends, I'd never ever imagined a wedding where she wasn't my maid of honor. I just never even considered it, and it was a huge blow to me when I realized she'd just be a bridesmaid. I mean, it's not really that huge of a deal, and I'm probably building it all up in my head, but this was really important to me, and now it won't go the way I'd thought it would. Jake's been great and has been very emotionally supportive, which means the world to me, and just reminds me that I'm marrying a wonderful man who really gets me. It's silly, but he makes sure to validate my feelings about the maid of honor thing. My cousin, who's also very close to me, did step up and take her place, but it's not the same. It's just not the same. I felt bad about it for a really long time, and it still feels kind of sad but I'll get over it by the time the wedding actually rolls around. Hopefully, I'll have a lot to distract me by then. Even now, I already have a lot of work to do on the wedding as it is, which helps to take my mind off the whole situation with Kate. There are also a lot of financial aspects to think about, so both Jake and I have been working extra hard so we can take a well-deserved break right before our wedding. It's been great for the most part, so I can't really complain except for the blip with my maid of honor. Kate and I have still been on great terms and are in touch every day, but now she's taking time out for other things too, like meditation, therapy, and even improv classes. I didn't even know she enjoyed doing that. To be fair, I don't think she knew she enjoyed that either, but it's okay. If she's happy, then I'm happy for her. Update 5. I'm married. Yep, it's true. I'm finally married now. And I couldn't be happier about it. Last week I got married to the man of my dreams in the most beautiful wedding I could have ever envisioned. Everything was dreamy and beautiful and so, so fun. We had a blast at the after party and even Jake, who's usually a wallflower, actually let loose and danced the night away with the rest of us. But yeah, let's address the elephant in the room as well. Kate and I are, of course, still the best of friends, and I love her just as much as I used to. But no, she didn't end up being my maid of honor, like a lot of you all had hoped to. I was disappointed for a really long time about it, but with time I forgot about it and sort of moved on from it. It was fun at the wedding and not awkward at all. She's doing what's best for her, and so am I. 
She's doing a lot better mentally now than she was doing earlier after her breakup and barely even talks about Travis or any other of her exes anymore, which is nice. She's also taken up painting as a hobby after dabbling in many other art forms. To be honest, she's not very good at it, but at least she tries and it helps take her mind off of things. Her parents are also a lot happier now that she's not caught up with some toxic guy all the time. They'd stopped speaking to her for a while in the middle because she'd had that affair with the married co-worker, but they're all back on good terms now. And I did see them having a gala time at my wedding as well. So things are going great for all of us now, and I couldn't be happier for myself and for Kate. I've realized that being friends does not necessarily have to mean that I have to always go out of my way to control her life, which I've been guilty of doing in the past sometimes. But we're adults now, and we are our own people now. Coming back to my own life, Jake and I are leaving for our honeymoon in a few days. We're going to the Bahamas, and it's going to be so much fun. We've been looking forward to this for months after all the hard work we've put into our respective jobs. We've earned this, and I can't wait to just unwind on the beach under the sun with the sound of waves hitting all the right notes. Fun fact. Kate's actually the one paying for our hotel because she wants me to accept it as our wedding gift, which is super sweet of her. She wanted to make up to me for stepping down as my maid of honor, and this definitely does the job. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.